team to challenge Reborn on their own level and come out on top. And then Finesse is the other team to do the exact same thing to Oxygen. So really, this is... This is what is going to be special. This is our game, Gems. And now we're in draft. That, they have to beat arguably one of their biggest rivals already right off the bat. I, in I, think, the this is the final. I think this is the biggest rivalry in the entire NA qualifiers. It really is. And it's in the quarterfinals, as I mentioned. One of these teams has to go home, not be able to get it, get through mm -hmm. to the finals, get through to one of those top two spots. Well, they'll be against, I believe, um, one of the Russian teams, I'm not sure, and I think twice who have been qualified as well. So it's going to be f fantastic to see how that goes. And let's hop straight into this draft. All right, getting this underway. I am so excited. So we're going to hit that play button in three, two, one, go. All right, starting the draft off, Gems, it's going to be Finesse with the very first pick and ban, going straight for the Rampage, knocking that one away from Meds. And we're going to see what Team Oxygen is going to counteract with, and they're not going to waste time. They're not going to do anything. They're going to ban out Bellica. I love the Bellica ban. It's known as Ram Riddle's, one of Ram Riddle's champions. It's also known as Arsenic's as well. So they can both play it. It targets mm -hmm. two people and removes it. It's a really strong flex pick that can go in multiple positions. And removing that from the board, I really like in the first pick, Decker. Uh, phases up, but I, I suspect with a Decker pick, we're going to be seeing more of a either a team composition fight get, uh, with a Howitzer if they can grab it. Or we might see something a little bit more special from Finesse. We've seen double carry compositions. Mm -hmm. Maybe we see something different coming out this time as well. All right, Morgesh being picked up by Oxygen. That's going to be Arsenic. Or maybe, like, once again, that's a, a pick that both players can play. They're going to follow that one up with Imsco on his classic Twin Blast, one of the best ADCs in the game right now that Revenant has received a little bit of a uh, rebalancing to kind of tune him down more along the line with the other characters in the game. And I think that's why we're seeing Decker come back a little stronger as well. Her cage... Uh, being able to zone out the teams completely as well as uh phase being tuned down and more along with the other supports and characters in the game brings the narbash and the decker back up in line grux is going to follow up as the next pick for team finesse that's going to be the one for chill phil and he's got a very very uh, strong grux play so i'm excited to see how that one plays out i'm mean, really just excited to see everything here this is going to be yeah. so good. Incredibly strong jungle. We talk about it time again. It's one of the top tier junglers, especially with Rampage being out. Banned. Um, Rampage has actually shot up recently in priority. Mm -hmm. A lot of teams really loving him. It has a lot of great synergy with uh, picks like FaZe, uh, with Decker, just in general, with the double stun. We used oh. to see in the past. And that is a double support coming up from Finesse. Are we seeing the same sort of thing we saw from Bronze Army, where we see the off lane phase that builds Cast Converter and Tainted Magic? I think we might actually see the energy lance coming in play. That's going to be interesting to see um, coming out of that's going to be Suki on off lane phase if that is uh, that is the case. Yeah, it will be. And we we saw Bronze Army doing the same thing with that conversation combination with Cranky Trash Can was near unkillable, and they took a game incredibly strongly as well and we might be seeing a similar line up here but they don't have a rampage this time they have a grux mm -hmm. they don't have the big sort of body uh that we saw bronze army have in the previous match um, until now when they pick position they did get their Severog. One thing I want to know is you're watching, if you pay attention to uh, the time left for both drafts, both teams are taking a long time to make their picks. They're being very thorough. They're using that extra time to their advantage without running out on it. So you can tell that they're not like they're not wasting time or unsure just on how the draft is going. They're they're being very thoughtful with their picks. They want to make sure they go out in the first game swinging and get that first victory coming out ahead. Uh, next two picks are going to be Kwong and, uh, for Oxygen, and then Finesse is following that up with a Sparrow, and they have one more left. Well, Sparrow, with this composition that they've picked, with the phase, with the deck, a containment field plus oh. the boost, gives <laughs> Sparrow huge amounts of control. The LTs that in a fire are multiple people, and Gideon with the pull is actually quite like, um, it's an interesting pick. There isn't much that can stop him uh, until Oxygen do secure that Narbash. So that Thunk is now going to be exclusively saved for Gideon, so he doesn't get that ultimate off in every single fight. 
It's the only thing that's going to really stop it. And Gideon got a new, got a buff on his pull too, on his ultimate. So it's going to start, instead of having an initial, initial pull like it used to before, uh, it's going to start the pull off at 300. And the longer the ult goes on, the stronger the pull gets. And then it's going to become even harder to get out of. The pull increases to 450. Which for this game is, is very, very up. potent. Hey, his oxygen lineup as well has huge amounts of single target. So if they do manage to catch catch out Strafe, that's it. Because Morigesh, with the mark, Sephiroth, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Subjugate, Quang with the uh, Fury of the Heavens, if they had hit that all onto Sparrow, and let's say some of the cooldowns are down, there's no quenching scales or anything to keep Sparrow alive, that's it. Uh, Finesse loses a huge amount of damage. It's mm -hmm. all reliant on this sort of single point for the most part of the game of inner fire from Sparrow hitting multiple people, shredding through the uh, the damage. But if they don't, if they don't do that, that's it. That that will be game for them. And Oxygen have to really be on their a game to try and utilize that fact where if they remove Sparrow from a fight. They will lose everything. Yeah, they'll just be able to win from there, right? Really. Yeah, it's going to be. It's a risky pick. It's a new thing we've actually just seen coming out, like at least on our side of the PCL last game. So I think taking double supports is viable, but it's going to be a. Um, it's a risky thing because, like you said, you're losing it on so much damage. Uh, it'll be more interesting when Wraith becomes able to play in the competitive scene because he's he's struggling a little in solo queue right now, uh, being a very utility based hero. But these kind of comps are the ones he excels at, and yeah, I'm, I'm I'm excited to see how that happens. But we're talking about in the future where we 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 need to focus on the now gems. We need to get into game. Yeah, let's hop it straight into this first match. All right, and we will do in just a second i am ready to go so am i three two one and go getting right underway into probably the biggest match of the series of the any qualifiers it is oxygen versus finesse and since we already claimed our stakes on who's going to win, I will take my friends over at Finesse. Uh, we have Lucere on Decker. We have Strafe bringing out the Sparrow. Suki off lane phase. Proficiency going out the Master Gideon and Chillfill in the jungle on Grux. We are seeing Oxygen go for an aggressive early game right now as they invade immediately into the enemy jungle, getting complete vision down as a team. They're going to just ward right into the green buff, walk right out. Not a whole lot that um, <clears throat> Finesse is going to do about it. Just going to make sure they play it safe and nothing crazy happens. They are aware that their jungle is currently warded up and they're going to try and de-ward it quickly while they have the chance. Both teams are backing now and getting ready for their first buys and starting items of the game. And also, before we even talk about it, on the side of Oxygen, we have Imsco on that Trim Blast, Meds on the Sevrog, Phasma on that Narbash, Arsenic on the Morigesh, and Team Rebound that they're also known as Ram Riddles on that Quang. And backs have happened. They are just going into lane. Um, we do see Strafe setting up this, this freeze. He's able to get it set up for himself. However, Ram is going to have something to say about it. And he's instantly going in, getting ready to challenge the enemy team uh, in the duo lane. You know, I think this is going to be a very, very methodical game. You know, both teams want to make sure they're doing everything perfectly well. Strafe already playing a little further back against Team Reborn, who's just able to completely farm away by himself at the moment. We're seeing a duo mid coming out of Oxygen right now, using the Narbash and the Twin Blast mid, and they have the Morigash offlane. Yeah, Oxygen was one of the first teams to run this sort of duo mid composition. We used to see it in the past as well when Marty was around. Uh, they made it incredibly popular uh, mm -hmm. among competitive games. They would consistently use meds and go for invades as a, like a three-man roaming squad to try and get the advantage. Uh, the warding they, they set up as well allows them to do that. Uh, it's going to be interesting how that plays out. All right, and starting this one off, we do have both green buffs being taken. Chillfield rotating around now, looking to see what he can get done as uh, Meds is offing for a more farm-centric um, quick start. Phasma and Insko are doing a good job of bullying out Gideon and making sure he's staying under his tower. And that's the power of the duo mid right there, is you have the ability to just... Um, freeze the enemy mid laner, making sure he's not going anywhere. He needs to stay under his tower or else you're going to lose it. Yeah, I completely agree. And right off the bat, we are seeing a slight leading farm already onto the Siren team, 
Team Oxygen. It's one thing they've always excelled at over most other teams is they are able to get this lead purely on minion scores and we're already seeing a 10 point 10 minion lead three minutes in which is pretty substantial meds however He's might just be falling here in a lot of trouble it's proficiently trying to get the auto attack off suki rotating to help out as well it's going to be the off lane phase picking up the kill as the double purple buff is on the map. Phasma has it. He's still completely invisible. Gonna go for that thunk. Gets it landed, and that's gonna be Imsco following up with the grenades. Proficiency using that torn space to jump right out and back to safety. Yeah, completely. And that's first kill on the board. Over to Finesse. Over onto Suki, uh, which is an off lane phase. It's gonna allow him to get those points a little bit earlier, help him survive as well, which I really like. Uh, depending on the builds, we might see the cast converter coming out a lot earlier, which would give him that extra survivability, mm -hmm. specifically against the Morigesh. Um, just removes that hive damage, removes that mark damage, and heals back up to full, um, and not being in sort of range for the ultimate of Arsenic. And that's going to be a hard one, a hard matchup for FaZe, because Arsenic gets to just pick on and bully down that FaZe. Like, that is, that is literally the optimal lane for a Morigesh being right in the in the support and the support ain't gonna do anything about it because she doesn't have the damage to sustain really the cra casket for like you said is the only thing that's gonna really keep her alive yeah her abilities will keep her alive i, I actually I actually favor the matchup i think suki once he gets a couple of cards in there will be mm -hmm. uh, pretty difficult to kill especially if we saw the same sort of build path we saw from bronze army where they got the early stasis gem which can completely negate a lot of morigesh's damage and it means it'll be a pretty neutral lane which is perfect for the side of finesse it means that suki can just sit there he can farm up and then he can rotate for the fights later on all right and both junglers right now have yet to do any gank it's just kind of interesting considering we know how um aggressive meds likes to be chill fill as well if you give them the opportunity they're going to take advantage of it purple buff spawning once again it's going to be proficiency grabbing the blue buff chill fill grabbing the purple and i think he's looking to rotate over to see what he can grab onto ram riddles in the right lane he's opting for a lane gank Oh no, he's going to rotate back around. Kind of curious to see what he's going to do with that. I think he wants to make the move. Now that the tower is gone, there's TeamReborn.net throwing out the Judgment of the Heavens to try and get some poke damage off. Chillfield still coming down the lane where there is no vision. He's going to walk up. His team is playing it safe as he gets right behind them. And there is the double pain going out onto him to start it off. Pull, stun, and this could be the kill. But the Light of the Heavens is going to try and protect Reborn.net. However, the Piercing Arrow is there to secure the kill on two Ram Riddles. First kill of the game going to Team Finesse. Second kill. Second kill. Oh. Going over to Finesse. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, they already yeah, had the early the kill first. on some med. So this what I really like is they're punishing Team Reborn on that or Ram Riddles, not allowing him to get that sort of farm he loves to get in the early stages of the game. He has already got nineteen, um, which is slightly ahead of Suki, but again, Suki's managed to grab that kill. He's got that point lead. And there is the Ethereum Mask that we talk about. Mm -hmm. we've, we've been seeing that time and time again. I, it's a lovely card for four points. Got no upgrades into it, but that cycle power from the active is incredibly useful. You can switch between having a little bit more armor so you don't die as quickly if you're getting ganked, and then mm -hmm. you can switch to power when you want to go for that combo on the Quang. You're getting 12 points of, of uh, you're getting 12 points of uh, card points for the cost of four really it's worth it and you can just cycle that whenever you want to there's not a really long cooldown on them at all um the mana regen on it is nice you know having three points of mana regen can really help you especially if you're on a fighter because their mana pools are so small that you don't need a lot of mana regen on the fighters to actually top them back up uh river buffs are spawning right now it's going to be a double red and we see lucera rotating over to one Phasma has vision, but he's often to not go onto that one. As we see Arsic and Meds on the right lane going for a gank and securing the kill. Doing what they should do and taking advantage of that phase off lane. Yeah, phase no real escapes, uh, isn't able to just... Has to kind of just run away. Mm -hmm. You can't really use the energy lance when you're getting ganked. Um, you're kind of... Your movement ability slowed quite a bit. It makes it a lot more difficult. You kind of just have to go for the blind and hope that they don't hit you during it. However, if you've got the mark in the hive on you from Morigesh, that is still just going to be doing damage to you the entire time. And 
Suki not recalling, not spending those points that he had earlier, meant that he didn't have things like cast convert. But we are seeing a damage first on Suki. <laughs> Straight away tainted magic. I am loving this. He's going to try and go for the dual, the dueling capabilities instead. All right, look at him just completely burn down the health of Imsco with one energy lands. Tainted magic still doing his job. Phasma even actually used to have to use um, his heal aura to top him back up. Uh, overall, interesting start from both teams. I, 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 I saw Chillfield just a second ago invading the enemy jungle to get a ward down, which is a very risky maneuver considering you have a duo mid and a jungler right there. It was easy to collapse on them and no one's going to be there to really help Chillfield. <clears throat> yeah, it is. And already looking at card points, farming wise, again, still, even though Oxygen have been a few kills down, have actually got incredibly high farming as well. Uh, 20 point lead, 30 point lead, roughly, to be honest, on the board. And you can see that reflected in the points. Even though there's uh, extra kills on the side of Finesse, points are still incredibly close. The card power, Suki's at 11. We see Team Reborn at 11 as well. This is going to be a close match. And mm -hmm. We see Raptor spawning in about just a minute. Whether or not these teams will be going for them as they spawn or maybe later on will be dependent on, I think, this vision control that they can get. Ruba spawning proficiency, picking a purple blue yet to be picked up by the enemy team. He is currently under vision and they know he's right there as they reward into the uh, river entrance on the jungle. He's looking to get a nice ultimate off. There is going to be a challenge on the green buff, but Mez managed to use the colossal blow to secure that one. And now we... Yeah, we, can, we can see Finesse, you know, just trying to force something, but they haven't been able to just yet. Four man here, and five man mid here. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to be able to take this tier one. Tier one being engaged on. Meds doesn't have the Colossal Blow back up just yet, but minions are cleared out, so they do have to back off that when he's going to take an Energy Lance and the Cosmic Rip dropped on his head, dropped onto his head. So Meds is sitting at half health, just trying to defend his own tower. However, he does for at least this minion wave, and they'll be able to back off on that one. Raptors are spawning right now. It's going to be an engagement into the left lane as TeamReborn.net has no mana. The stasis bomb will land to let the Sparrow re-engage and catch back up. She has a blue buff, so she's able to keep up. However, missing those auto attacks as the team does rotate over. So Strafe is going to peel back off and go farm his tower and keep it under control. Constant aggression against uh, Ram Riddles here. However, he's still able to keep up with this farm. Even though he's been pushed out of lane, he has, he's has he been able to take exactly what he's been given the entire time. Doesn't really miss much, uh, which is still keeping him in this game points-wise. Sitting at 14 mm -hmm. points, it's already it's slightly ahead of Suki, even though he Suki did manage to get the kill. But it's just the difference in minion scores. 50, 36 to 50 in comparison to offlane. It's, granted, FaZe has a little bit of a rougher time farming. Mm -hmm. Those basic attacks aren't the easiest to get last hits with. Especially since they're so they're, they're so small in comparison to the Morgash, who's just able to throw them quick, them, them those fast daggers. Black buff coming up for Chillfill. Red buff for Severog. Ideal rivers going to both junglers on the respective sides of the map. And it's Chillfill looking to clear out because now they have the black buff. They have an advantage to get the Raptors as Meds is on the right side of the map. They're beginning to rotate into the Raptor pit, just waiting for the team to get over there. Suki's there as well. And that is going to the engagement on to the Raptors. <clears throat> Oxygen kind of watching and waiting to see what happens. It looks like they're just trying to give them away. Because if they engage them, that could be a very bad story. As Phasma has his thunk just ready to uh, be thrown out. But team isn't able to rotate over there. So they're going to give those Raptors away for free. Because chill, Phil. Grux with the black buff. You know, phase right there. You don't want to mess with that. That's not yeah, good they're news. not going to actually be too upset about that. Uh, they didn't have the rotation. However, in the meantime, Arsenic's just been sitting there farming. He's still doing incredibly awesome at 18 points, which is equal to what Strafe is with those Raptors. So in the end of the day, points-wise, because they were able to farm for the majority of the time while those Raptors were being taken, they haven't actually lost out too much overall. And what they've done is uh, focus their resources elsewhere on the map. They weren't able to take a fight, but again, 
Mm. Lucero looking to be a little trouble. He's going to jump right back up with the rocket boost into the gold buff to safety after he tries to get a little bit of a ward out. And it's going to be Phasma clearing that one. Vision control from both sides of the map, both teams, uh, very strong right now. We are seeing Oxygen put up a very good front line with their vision to make sure that Chill Phil and the rest of his team can't take advantage of uh, rotating into the jungle. They are looking to group up and take down the mid tower, which is on its last leg. 10 seconds till river buff spawn. That could really help uh, Team Finesse go in and secure that push into the mid lane they're looking for as we have proficiency on the right side of the map, just waiting it out and securing that one. They're going to back off in the tower and try and protect the tier two, letting the tier one fall. It's going to be a black buff spawning and a purple buff spawning. We are seeing proficiency rotate over into the right lane to go against Arsenic. He's going to drop the rock, do a little bit of damage in that one. He should be able to secure that gold buff if he so chose to instead he's not going to prioritize it at all and he's going to walk into lane and continue farming so i think the way we're going to see this now is we're going to see proficiency go up against arsenic now that arsenic has gotten some power and suki's going to hover around the mid lane uh getting some help from his jungler to keep himself alive over there we're seeing an incredibly defensive warding line as well from oxygen it's made it incredibly hard here for finesse actually invade and go for what they've been wanting to do the entire game for uh, ganks and get a couple of team fights mm -hmm. because if you look at it, the majority of the jungle entrances have actually been covered um by oxygen except their strong side with the green buff has been cleared out a little bit of their vision on the fight side of finesse but again not gonna be too much of an issue the mid laners will be able to catch a lot of those rotations coming out along with the wards around the river and the prime here from oxygen all right and we are seeing a very method like the game has been so quiet we're used to seeing both these teams comes out guns blazing and just, you know, having a really bloody death match right out of the gate. Score is only two to one right now, 14 minutes and 30 seconds into the game. And Which... we're just looking at points. There's a three point lead in carries. However, Meds is at 18, but Chillfield's at 18 as well. And on top of that, if we just look at the off laners, you see Arsenic's at 22, Suki's at 17. Mm -hmm. That is where the disparity is coming in right now. Uh, Arsenic doing incredibly well um, points wise. He's also got his Tainted Magic online, incredibly strong on Morigesh. Similar sort of effect that you'd get on the phase with the Energy Lance with the Hive. Uh, just <clears throat> really strong pick, allows a huge boost in power for Arsenic and neither team wanting to take the risk. It is game one. Maybe they have a little bit of nerves here. There's a lot on the line here for this quarterfinals from both sides. Oh, and now we have Chill Phil followed up by Lucer and Proficiency going in. Med's getting a very good subjugate off as Imsco is going to burn down the green buff of Chill Phil using that ventilate. Chill Phil sitting there is sitting there with a black buff at this time. And they're still looking to rotate back in as Oxygen now has rewarded their jungle and getting that vision line that we were just talking about back up in there. They're going to clear out the one ward as the green buff is spawning. Meds knows not to mess around with a black buffed Grux as they jump right on there. This is going out. He's going to get the colossal blow ready, but it won't be enough as the Warlord's challenge from Chillfield go out. This is the first big team fight of the game as Chillfield gets knocked away. Proficiency following up with a four man ultimate from Gideon as Arsenal picks up a kill onto the Decker and there is a Tainted Magic from Suki going out to apply a little bit of damage however the fight and engagement overall won by Team Oxygen it could be Suki going down as well as the Judgment of Heaven will land on top of the phase Phasma rotating around as well to pick it up Ram Riddles securing the kill and that is a four for not team fight that Chill Phil and the rest of his squad was looking to pick up in the jungle all for a green buff that they managed to secure but not worth it at all as they're now losing their jump pads off in the right lane. The minion wave was already preset here for Silent Oxygen. It was starting to hit the tier two. However, with death time is still being soloed, I don't think they're able to do this. They're gonna have to back out. They don't have uh, mana on a lot of their heroes right now. Arsenic's incredibly low. We also see the same across the board. Imps going Team Reborn, incredibly low mana. It was a nice idea with a 4 for one fight in the early stages of the game, mm -hmm. you really can't take much off of it um, because of how low death times are. 
All right, there is Chill Phil engaging onto Meds as Meds misses the Colossal Blow to knock him away. Subjugate will land the Stasis Bomb, just missing the jungler of Team Oxygen as they quickly rotate five over to the blue buff. It's straight picking that one up. Purple buff on the left side of the map, but both teams are unaware that it's there. As we have yet another engage, Warlord's Challenge going once again, followed by the smash and grab. Chill Phil doing a good job of frontlining for his team, but Suki's not able to follow up as well. Proficiency zoning out the enemy with the black hole as straight picks up a kill onto the jungler of Team Oxygen, and that is going to be an overall fair, favorable engage for Team Finesse this time, right after they lost 4-1. Chillfield rotating over to the purple left to secure that off the map. I think they might look to get the Raptors. If they do, it is a favorable chance. Oh, there's Phasma rotating well to get the ward off. It will not be enough. He's trying to run away. However, he gets picked off as well. Two people down now for Team Oxygen as Finesse rotates onto the Raptors. We see Kwong trying to make the decision of whether or not he wants to rotate in. However, he's pulled back by the shot collar of Team Oxygen. And he's going to rotate in as well and just wait back by and let them get yet another Raptor. Yeah, this is increasing Strafe's lead. He's now at 31 points. Hides on the board. Managed to get those couple of kills, which was incredibly helpful. Yes, they did lose a 4-0 to zero fight, but they didn't let that stop them. They came back, they saw a, a favorable fight where they managed to get a pick onto meds. And from there on in, they snowballed that, that fight. That one pick allowed them to take another one and Raptors, which keeps them in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, even though they are behind on kills on the board, uh, they are taking other objectives on the map to keep their card power in check. And we are seeing Arsenic begin to rotate over to the uh, right side of the map, opting for, I believe, that would be the safe lane for his side, correct? Or is that yeah, still... No, that, yeah, that's the safe lane. He's on the safe lane, so he's getting his free farm. You know, just making sure he goes up. And it's going to be Reborn.net uh, back into the off lane. And if we're just looking at builds, I'm, I like Suki's build. He's also got the Thick Blood mm -hmm. on the face. Reduce that healing that comes out uh, from Phasma, from meds. Uh, just overall, if anyone grabs it, he like the passive lifesteal that comes out from Quang. Reduces that as well across the board. Uh, it, I just like the card in general because... There's so much things like quenching as well, uh, the it, regen abilities as well. Thick blood just just shuts healing. down. Thick blood straight out shuts down quenching scales. 100%. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I love it. You don't even have to go for the root. With Suki, you can just kind of spread the energy lance across the board, hitting everyone, and just give the reduced healing everywhere. <clears throat> Engage coming out of chill fill and proficiency, using the torrent space to commit, close that gap. There's the Warlord's Challenge, follow the smash and grab. Proficiency burning the ult just to secure the kill and make sure it goes down. Suki rotating as well and going to heal up the mid laner of Team Finesse as they begin to push down yet another tower. Going for the methodical approach, Suki is going to take a little bit of tower damage to burn down the green buff of meds. Now they're rotating into the enemy jungle, looking to get yet another pick. Stasis Bomb will land, getting Chill Phil a good opportunity to the smash and grab. He dashes away from the Cosmic Rift, but he gets rooted and caught in a cage. And it's going to be Imsko rotating in as well to try and pick up a kill onto Suki with Reborn.net. Straight burning that inner fire with meds, blocking them back. Colossal Blow, Phasma getting the Crash Bang Boom off for the second time after being stunned out of the start of it. And Sko is going to follow it with the kill. However, Strafe and Suki are still in the fight and ready to go. Suki pulling Lucera back from engaging. Overall, I believe that's still a favorable win for Team Vanessa as they back off, getting a few kills onto their ADC, getting a few kills and picks, and a tower as well. They weren't able to take out Strafe the entirety of that fight. There was so much damage onto him. We saw the Judgment and the Fury of the Heavens landing onto him. Still wasn't enough. He still survived, still managed to get topped up with health from that phase. And again, the longer these fights last, Sparrow, the amount of damage he can put out, it doesn't really matter if the rest sort of go down. As long as they keep Strafe alive, the majority of it, they're going to win these fights. That's the, the idea of their composition, is this single point... Protect where, the Sparrow. <laughs> yeah, protect the Sparrow. You're going to use the Gideon pull to protect the Sparrow as well. You're going to use the Smash and Grab from Grux, the Warlord's Challenge as well. Just to potentially even just pull people away from Strafe. And we saw that happen. And Strafe is now 37 points. Highest still on the board. He has got that hemorrhage with some lifesteal as well. And especially with the case being that like the uh, Team Finesse wants to fight in those enclosed spaces. That's where the Inner Fire, the Gideon, you know, the Decker Cage are going to be at their strongest. 
Smash and Grab has a wider range in a closed space because it has a more area to cover without oxygen being able to move so you're seeing them they want to pick fights in those jungles and they haven't been able to up until this point and now they're successfully getting it off straight going for the green buff right now that's a good idea you know the protect the sparrow comp is starting to pull through and he is the most carded person in the game like you just said kind of curious to see what's going to play out now because i think people are going to start looking to opt for prime as that's going to be the next deciding factor on who gets the lead of the game yeah 22 minutes of the game sparrow and phase can take prime incredibly quickly in just uh, under about 30 seconds you can take mm -hmm. that 20 seconds incredibly quickly use the boost from <laughs> from phase and you instantly start and we're gonna see it we're gonna see the lead as well from chill phil which makes it even quicker yeah and that is meds <laughs> meds in a lot of trouble the only one there is getting engaged on 5v1 by the team using the colossal blow chill phil's gonna dash in get the smash and grab he's looking to secure a kill on the enemy jungle might not be able to but his proficiency jumps in getting a nice black hole onto phasma with stray securing that kill team reborn.net finally getting the grux down as well as the adc this is where finesse could be in trouble proficiency has no mana looking to get up but it's going to be arsenic, arsenic knocking him back down once again with the ultimate of the Moragesh, bringing out that big stack of bees and stabbing him right in the face. They managed to take down Strafe. was a little bit overextended right there. And this is what I was talking about. If they manage to take down Strafe, that's it. They do start to win the fights. Uh, Finesse have a much stronger composition in, overall in terms of power when Strafe isn't around. <clears throat> Specifically in 4v4 fights, if one if that fifth person is straight that's missing, Vanessa will be winning. Two supports uh, isn't the greatest damage up, but yes, Suki has the Tainted Magic which ups him, but overall it is still fairly low in comparison to, say, a Quang, mm -hmm. because he's got that Judgment and Fury of the Heavens, which is an incredible amount of burst. Yeah, it definitely seems to be the case. And I think going for the Prime was probably a bit of a risky play. If they were able to get that pick on meds, it would have been very worth it, but they had burned a lot of resources just to try and secure that kill, and he managed to just get away by the skin of his teeth. If proficiency were to ult a little earlier, he would have been able to secure that kill on meds. Meds wouldn't have been able to gone anywhere, and then it would have been able to turn into something more in their favor. As it stands, Meds was able to still provide support for his team using a subjugate from a far uh, from a long range, using the colossal blow to peel the team back from his own team letting the rest of Oxygen follow up and get the important damage off on the right targets. Yeah, and also we see every neutral objective on the map, Raptors and Prime. Also, another point I need to mention, Team Rebond.net, 40 points in that offlane. 153 farm Ram Riddles, doing Ram Riddles things, Radiant Mantle with Traitor's Touch for that percentage health damage on a Quang, which is an interesting one I'm seeing. And I'm loving that pick. He does not stop farming. You can keep the man down, but you can't stop. Oh, Suki in a lot of trouble as Mad's going in. And they're going to blind him, but not going to be enough. The Siphon still will go out for Med, stacking the life of that phase, adding that to the uh, shoulder pads. They're rotating over to the Raptors now <clears throat> to try and pick that up. And it like this comp that Finesse has really relies on keeping those people alive. Like. If that phase gets picked off easy, you're losing a lot of your utility. The team needs to just operate on this composition. Yeah, it's, it's incredibly reliant on the protect the carry comp. It's uh, a popular term that we, we hear across a lot of MOBAs. We've yet to be see, really seeing it in Paragon. This is probably one of the first iterations, I think, of it. Um, we saw it back in Legacy when we had double carries, but they didn't really need sort of protection in that sort of sense. They mm -hmm. were just incredibly strong on their own. Uh, nowadays, with carries being a lot easier to kill, we do need these extra supports, and I'm really liking the sort of double support, provide as much uh, utility, as much healing as possible onto a Sparrow, sort of a late-game carry that does need a bit more help and protection, and we get to see Sparrow shine incredibly well because of it. Yeah, and I think the Moragesh was a great pick um, going into this composition. I, I feel like Morgan Morgesh was picked before the phase was, correct? Uh, I cannot remember. I believe... I believe so. Morgesh was first, I think. Yeah, so I, I feel like Finesse kind of picked themselves into a corner, putting a phase up against a Morgesh. Also, quickly, Suki has... Uh, Shockwave and Teleblink, which I like. I just mm -hmm. wanted to mention that 
extra protection, extra slows around Strafe, so when Strafe does get dived, he can walk away and still be safe. I think that's the first time we've seen Shockwave in any games or any competitive scene, and probably since Legacy, since the initial nerf of Shockwave turning into a slow. Well, with the Protect the Carry Compass we've been seeing, you want to give as many potential things to keep Strafe alive. Uh, having a minus 250 move speed uh, across the board, along with the blind, means that Strafe can then just walk out pretty freely from mm -hmm. a lot of fights if he does get caught. And they are able to protect that Sparrow as much as possible. There's Suki bringing out the Energy Lance to try and add a little bit of damage. However, I believe the front line of Oxygen at this point is armored up uh, just enough to where that Energy Lance isn't doing the damage that it was able to before. So we're going to have to see Suki um, bring out some Ability Pen just to try to get that chip off. And there's Proficiency diving in with Chill Phil. There is going to be the burden, followed by the clap and grab from Chill Phil. Phasma's gonna go down to the burn and bleed, but it's Strafe to one can secure the kill. And now they're looking to go back onto Prime, maybe to secure this one. They're gonna try this one again, just like they did last time. It could be bad news bears for Team Finesse as Arsenic and Meds are doing what they can to try and get in and crack that zoning defense from there. Oh, the subject had just missed. However, Suki getting hit, and that's gonna be Lucera popping the containment fence to stop Mez going in. They're on the last leg of it. They do manage to secure it at the cost of someone's potential life. Proficiency going in with a great ultimate onto the carry. That is Imsko. And now Suki sitting at the last bit of health Finally going down, just able to go down, and there is Strafe as well as Chill Phil. Overall, that Prime might not have been worth it. If Proficiency is able to get away, he could still be able to salvage at least the minion buff and a little bit of damage on the carry, but he's walking all over the map, being zoned out, and he gets picked up as well. That's gonna be a full ace for Team Oxygen once again, making sure that the greed of Finesse is punished. And they don't get what they want. They got well, the prime. I, I they think got the, the prime CP, pool. But I actually really like the prime pool. They recognized that Ram was really far off in the other side of the map. They recognized they also got a pick. Prime, they had vision. They didn't have vision control of it. Uh, but again, they didn't take it down quick enough. They used a lot of their resources. There was no inner fire from Strafe to burst down the, the prime. And in the end, that gave Oxygen more time to rotate mm -hmm. and get the prime removed of all five members which is the key point there and an inhibitor i think burn i think using the inner fire for the uh, prime wasn't needed they could have just used the hemorrhage yeah, instead they, they'd used it before to take down um phasma phasma so they didn't have it to burst down the the prime that is uh why ram actually had enough time to rotate across the map oh that's so unfortunate so unfortunate so that's going to be yet another prime wipe in favor of Team Oxygen, uh, as we do see Strafe and Suki rotate into the enemy, uh, into their own jungle, and put that green buff back on Strafe. As far as card points now, um, what are we looking at, Gems? I know the score is currently 15 to 10 in favor of Oxygen. Strafe's sitting at 51, um, Imsko's at 42. That is kind of a big disparity right now. Imsko pretty far behind Strafe, which is actually a pretty big deal because Imsko is actually not going to win a duel against Strafe at. Uh, at this point in time, Strafe, even at 60 to 60, will win a fight with uh, against the Twin Blast. And even having that sort of difference in power makes it incredibly rough here. It's mm -hmm. going to be really reliant on Ram Riddle seeing at 51 points as well here to be able to take down Strafe in a lot of these engagements. Yeah, they don't even need to get Strafe half the time if they get Suki too. Like, fa um, getting the phase down is just as big of a pick as it is Strafe. Because Suki's half the peel for Strafe, you know? Sparrow's not going anywhere. She, she's going to do about, damage, yeah. but... There's a Satori Cloak on Louis Zero. I'm not sure if he still is. He's only at 30 points on my screen. I don't know if that's the bug yeah. or if he's actually at 30. But again, he's got a Satori Cloak, he's got the Honor of the Pure, and he's got Quenching. He's going to be removing that armor across the board with percentage health damage going to be taking as well from other mm -hmm. cards on his team. That is a lot of sort of shred damage over time that... Um, Finesse have been building, but the same thing can also be said for Oxygen. There's Thick Blood, there's Tainted Magic on Morgesh, which mm -hmm. I really love. The Hive is incredibly strong, and Meds has managed to grab that Mad Spore as well. Uh, huge sort of tankiness 
really lovely card and they're setting up to push this tier two now oxygen in a really strong position interesting enough we're actually seeing a, tw a traitor's touch come out of um ram riddles as well yeah we mentioned that earlier just the percentage health is pretty big right now especially with tank front lines that are healing a lot like meds builds a lot of health mm -hmm. uh We'll build Tune Barry with health, Guardian's Wards with health, sort of Tempered Plates with health, with only a little bit of armor, and being able to get that extra damage down, which goes, which sort of ignores armor, is yeah. incredibly useful. Yeah, so it, it's definitely like having the front lines um, go over there and like have, have them picked is really strong, but there are counters to them um at this time that are ve being very favorable for uh, everyone on the teams um we do have the tier two going down for finesse they've already lost in him an inhibitor on the prime side of the map and that's gonna be yet another tier two opening up a little bit more map pressure and uh power for oxygen to flex you know they don't have I'm to worry about the, the extra way tower. they're setting up these lanes they know someone has to deal with that super minion wave so the mm -hmm. second they saw proficiency they split into this 4-1 scenario have Arsenic push the other wave that they can't have anyone defend and then the other four uh, go to that the furthest lane away from that inhibitor being down makes it the rotation be a lot quicker for the side of oxygen if a fight was to break out and, and it's a really smart move too because it's not like phase is gonna be able to um stop the push right you, you need to put your other damage to your only other damage dealer on that side of the map and Gideon has at this point proficiency to show that Gideon is an integral part to the composition. Like there's a protect the phase. However, Gideon's able to apply a slow and keep people in zone or apply a massive amount of damage onto the enemy team. So they still need the Gideon there. Without that, their only damage dealer literally is the Sparrow. A little bit of chill fill, but he's going to be worrying about um, stopping himself from going down. He needs to keep himself alive just to protect the front line or to be the front line and protect the back line. Meds with his purple buff is looking to try to get a pick on proficiency here. And he does seem to be in the right place at the right time. Proficiency does notice it as he drops the ward. The subjugate will miss as Chillfill rotates in as well to help him out. They will no longer engage as the uh, right side of the jungle is being engaged on by the rest of Team Oxygen who are looking to ply themselves on the aggression. Strafe a little overextended right now, almost in range of the judgment that is going to be the tether. On the I, I just like the way Oxygen is controlling sort of this mid to late game points mm -hmm. where everyone's hitting the max card points, especially for carries. They're never sort of forcing a fight they don't need to. They're kind of just, okay, we can go for a pick here. We've got three lanes pushing in our favor. Um, if we get a pick, it's fine. If we don't, we rotate to take this tier two down because we're going to be there first. Mm -hmm. We've, we're in complete control of the map and what is happening. And Prime is spawning as well. So a couple more seconds. Prime is going to be up, and it's going to be interesting to see who manages to get it this time. Arsenic getting hit by the clap, the cage, and the smashing grab. He's going to go down, but that was a hefty cost in order for them to use it, burning three separate ultimates all on to um, Arsenic. It's going to be the containment fence down, the Warlord's challenge, as well as uh, <clears throat> a few other abilities coming out of the rest of the team. Will we see a repeat where they get the one pick and they go for the prime from Finesse? They do have 50 seconds on the clock right now still to try and look for a fight that's a 4v5, which is incredibly favorable for them. They can try and force the situation yet again. But again, the power of Ram Riddles, he can just obliterate someone. Suki Tello blinking in right now as he pops the energy lance off to try and help out. Team looking to engage on Ram Riddles. However, it's leaving the back line open as Meds is getting the subjugate down. Suki going to bust strength with FaZe's ultimate. They're now rotating in as going to try and help out, but the team is going to go under the tower back to safety. Arsenic now spawning in 15 seconds, and that is yet another ultimate burn down for Team Finesse, not being able to get anything off of it, but they're looking to go to Prime. This is the exact same thing that happened last time, using a lot of their abilities in order to try and get a pick and not being successful. They're going back onto Prime as Mez is trying to poke out. Suki doing what he can with the energy lance to get the tainted magic and thick blood off. As Chill Phil and Strafe are doing whatever damage they can. It's going to be Team Reborn.net going in with the ultimate. However, Prince is getting stunned out by the thunk. He's now stuck 
as they try and get damage off onto meds. They do secure the kill, but first, it's going to be Fritz going down. Then it's going to be Chillfill going down. Lucer looks to be next as Strafe can't get a kill onto the Kwong. And that is going to be yet another team wipe on a greedy prime. They weren't able to take it down yet again, and that might actually just be game. Oxygen has got this huge wave of super minions here, and they have 35 seconds before Decker spawns to take it, and I think that is going to be game one going over the side of Oxygen here off that big play around Prime. And that was definitely Finesse trying to get the Prime, but... The issue being they had used so many of their ultimates, so many of their abilities and the resources on the team just to try and get that prime set up. They had no containment field. They had no phase ult. The Warlord's challenge was gone, so the bleed stacks were out of question too. You didn't have the opportunity to do that. What they should have done is baited prime, brought people in and made sure and then got another pick try and win the team fight with the resources they had available to them instead of forcing the prime and getting themselves caught out in an unfavorable situation for the third time in a row really good sort of calls late game mm -hmm. from oxygen they, they recognize they can take this fight they're tanking prime um even though it was a 4v5 for the majority of it they stalled out long enough for i think to get back in as morigash um throughout it because of all the healing because of all the tanking Arsenic was able to get back in, was able to turn that fight around, and straight dying, uh, being in that pit, mm -hmm. was pretty much spelled the end of the game right there, and really well played from Oxygen. They didn't lose their call, even though they lost a few sort of big fights in sort of the early to mid game. Yeah, the, the um, finesse definitely showed that they were wanting to try and end the game as much as possible, um, trying to put way too many of their their chips into uh, Orb Prime at the wrong moments. Ultimately, led to their outdoing, uh, undoing because they were carded equal with the enemy team up until the second prime fight they lost the second wipe they went in the jungle they got wiped full. It wasn't even like yeah. oxygen wasn't making picks; they were getting aces which made a very big difference. Any advantage that Finesse was able to get back up was then lost by those team wipes. It is 1-0 now. Mm -hmm. That is the first game of the best of three going over to Oxygen. Can Finesse sort of change it up for the next match? Will they go for a different composition or will they stick with this double carry, sort of double support to protect the carry composition that we saw in game one? I, I'm, I, I think that composition was not a good pick. You saw the Morgesh putting a phase, putting a double support against a Morgesh just gives Morgesh more targets. Is really all you're doing. And, uh, and they had the foresight to not go through with it at that time, right? They could have, yeah. they could have picked, made a different pick, but they decided to stick their composition. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. So now in the next game, like we discussed earlier, what is the thought process of going into the second game? What are they going to do? Are they going to change things up? They're going to try it again, which I think they shouldn't. They should stick to something more traditional that they're more comfortable doing. Yeah, I completely agree. However, we're going to hop into a short break right now. Mm -hmm. We'll be back shortly with game number two of our best of three between Oxygen and Finesse. I am Geronimo Jack. This guy right here, I got the right side this time, is Gems. And we'll be back in just a minute. 